that's what kind of got me thinking about this when you talked about this in the context of a truly American feel to free spoke. And it's really that our founding fathers were inspired by these philosophers that debated and debated and debated ideas, right? Like Hobbes and Locke and Rousseau and Nietzsche, like they debated and they, they didn't ever misunderstand the other point of view, right? They understood it so deeply. They could, could spit it out. Well, there is a op-ed that references previously, and that's how our founding fathers came about. And they did the same thing, right? Hello, culminators. Thank you for joining me once again in the search for truth. Well, no, no. I mean, I'm, of course, we're all searching for truth, but I mean, that's not really the theme of of the podcast. Sometimes we, sometimes we just have some laughs, right? But truth is important and searching is important. And if there's one thing I think just about everybody knows by now, it's that if you're searching for the truth, Google isn't the place to look for it. We're going to talk today with Kristen Jackson, one of those generic white people's names. It's very true. It's like Coleman. We're going to speak today to Kristen Jackson, who is part of the team. I don't know. Maybe she did the whole thing in her basement. But she is the face and brand person, spokesman of a different, of another search engine that is going to solve our problem. It's called Freespoke because the world needs an honest search engine. And you got to like that nice, clean look. And gee, anonymously, sir, here there are suggestions. Okay, that's, you know, I, I guess the algorithm spits those out. And of course, the best way to always check if a search engine is good is how does it deliver results when you search yourself? This is a pretty good hit because there are a couple of other people with my name claiming to be lawyers uh, who are also lawyers. Uh, I like this outcome. Okay, but how about, let's face it, how do I make a living? On the looks, right? Okay, image search, pretty good. And you know what else? Yeah, I mean, there, listen, Ronald Coleman, you're never going to get only white people, folks. It just doesn't work that way. But you, very quick, resp I, smooth. I like the presentation. I'm seeing, and, and I didn't really have a chance to play with it as much as as I might want to, I'm sure you've got a gazillion demonstrations, but quick. I mean, I didn't feel that, you know, this it has to be, of course, that's whatever it's, the, it's, it's not, it's not 2005. I mean, you, people have an expectation for, in you know, for search engine uh, performance. Okay. Let's talk about this, Kristen. Thanks for joining us. How'd we get here? It was really back in 2019, and you make a good point. I may be a co-founder and CEO, but I am a peon in the world of building the search engine. We have the team, the, the team of engineers who have built this and continue to build it and tackle every problem that we come across are really our differentiator and what's going to make us a huge success. So back in 2019, we were seeing that there was something off with Google search results. As you searched for information, you felt like at times, just at times, that you were getting more opinion than you were just getting a straight information engine. And we know about 90% of Americans rely upon this information information engine of Google to search for something. And you just expect that first page to tell you the truth, give you the full story and, and help you get the facts and get on with your day. We saw that wasn't happening. So back in 2019, we started building a competitor. Sorry, and so who's... When you say we, I'm not. This isn't the question of who's we, but it's a it's a, it, it is a question of who's we. Mm -hmm. What were you doing at the time? Were you in this space at all? Were you a a, a school teacher, an astronaut? I I, don't, I haven't done any research because yeah, that's for search engines. Sure, yeah. Right when we started it, I had launched one other small company. Um, it's called Paycheckology. You guys can check that out, but. I had not launched a previous company. I had worked on the Hill. I was a staff director of the Western Hemisphere Subcommittee, House Foreign Affairs Committee. So I had run a committee where you're kind of spending your day saying, what problem are we trying to solve? What resources can we bring together to solve it? I worked at a public affairs firm, very similar. I worked for some of our top um, companies in the world, and they would come to us with the problems for us to solve it. So I had done those various things in my background. I graduated from Georgetown um, with my master's. I had studied political science, international law, philosophy, 
throughout my background. And I had had part of my career, I had worked in Venezuela and I was executing US government grants in Venezuela. And it really is just an opportunity having studied that background, understanding what our founding fathers had in mind when they put this American experiment, this unique experiment into place that America is still living out today. And you get to see what happens when you don't have that great debate of ideas and democratic principles in place in a place like Venezuela where crime was out of control. This was back in 2010. Um, You'd sit down to order food at a restaurant. Half of the ingredients wouldn't be available. So that was a a bit of my background. But in 2019, (laughs) um, I was working with my co-founder and we decided to launch this. So you already knew that Others have tried to do this, and maybe some of them have done it. One of them had me going for a while, duck, duck, go. Mm-hmm. And then they announced, well, of course, we're going we're gonna to push down Russian stuff. I don't remember what the criterion was, but Russian propaganda or Russian, Outlets. we're going to make sure that everyone in our search engine results, that everyone gets the good guy story, not the bad guy story. And as people say in our time, and I was like, what? Yeah. Let's, let's put aside. You feel violated, right? You took the effort to switch your search engines because you believe that they're on your side of free speech and access to information. And then they weren't. What was, I mean, and, and even putting aside the not inconsiderable question of just how much sharing is available for for propaganda in that particular dispute uh as between the two sides yeah completely like that i thought was the business plan over there and i'm I'm not asking you to trash the competition but obviously you you knew that that had happened and it's factual so duckduckgo built a very successful business model of adding privacy elements onto more or less a Microsoft Bing search engine. So they have some other APIs that they bring in to enhance their search results, but it is mainly a Microsoft Bing search engine. And so they didn't have control. What happened at that time is Russia invaded Ukraine. Microsoft made a decision to block Sputnik and Russia today because they didn't want that propaganda propagating. And so they blocked it and DuckDuckGo was along for the ride. And people didn't realize that. And DuckDuckGo really wasn't honest because later... In 2022, it became public that your data was being shared with Microsoft. And that was another realization and violation of what they had had said to their following. So were they trying to make the best of the situation, of a situation that they really didn't have control over because of what Microsoft was doing? And Microsoft has become a massively woke company in the last 10 years. I I mean, that... The culture there has just gone kind of the the way of all the other tech startup companies. So you obviously had to do it differently. We we committed to the principles up front, right? I DuckDuckGo committed just to to give them some credit. They committed to privacy up front. There was such a hungry audience that was looking for that access to all the information and the full story that people gave DuckDuckGo that credit. I don't think they advertised on that as much as their early ads said, what are you searching for late at night? You don't want to tell us? We don't want to know. Search privately with DuckDuckGo, which honestly, they did a great job getting porn searchers as their early adopter market. And then they grew from there. And there's a lot of people who weren't using it for that, who just don't trust the government. So definitely a wide audience. But that advertisement into sports talk radio late at night was getting a very distinct user. Oh, group. really? And yeah. in fact, your web, your about us uh, makes a point of saying, since you mention it, mm-hmm. very, very interesting. Uh, let me get, let me do the free the, the screenshot on there to get the full visual drama. We support freedom for every person, which is why we're porn free. Porn free. I'm I'm looking forward to getting your free speech thoughts on this, but yes, we are proudly born free. It is so. The interesting about thing about me and my free speech thoughts is that I've got a pretty big problem with 
pornography being treated as free speech much more of a problem than the Supreme Court has or many of my free speech friends but of course you your 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 search engine you're not holding yourself necessarily to the first amendment standard on the other hand you have it are, w w what's the deal here is it a blacklist of sites or is it context based the the exclusion I mean, the combo um, so we do work with partners to do the context based so if you search for something i had a mom that was searching kind of in a funny way how old is too old to spank your kid and spank can be a blacklisted word that makes you get no results. And so we made sure now you can get context, you can get informational, inf you can get information around a topic like that, but um, but it will block the pornographic content. And then we do, there are certain sites that simply exist for sharing, propagating pornography, and we do add those to a blacklist. How early on in the development process did you make the decision to make that? I mean, this is on the, this is on the, on the about Mm -hmm. The about page, it's it's not at the top, but it's it, you know you don't have to search super hard to find it either. It search wasn't. Hard. Yeah, it, it was not the mission that we started out when we were we knew that there was a market to build the search engine for. It was really the neutral, show all viewpoints and a private. So those two things were out of the gate. We did end up blocking pornography pretty close to day one and building. By the time we had launched and done any press around. Free spoke. It was we did not have pornography in the product, and it really it was a colleague that said, "Let's just not show pornography." And I, I'm a little bit more libertarian myself, and so not knowing this space, I was thinking, you know, I, I see a room for maybe churches or communities or parents to talk about this space, but is it the space for private companies? You know, I don't, you know, it was. It took me a little bit to do my research and understand that a large percentage of these women are not choosing this, that pornography is the third most common form of sex trafficking. And that's according to data from the National Human Trafficking Hotline. So an analysis of that straight data. So once I realized that, wow, you know, I kind of just went with my colleague and said, okay, let's, we'll block it for now. Like we can decide as we go, as we build, as we launch. Um, and then we became knowledgeable in this space. We can get into the Pornhub documentary that's, that's streaming on Netflix and that the New York Times wrote, the, wrote a scathing analysis of and noted that a direct statement in that New York Times piece that Google's business model supports the business model of child molesters. And at that point, we decided we cannot be a part of this problem. We are going to be part of the solution. Was the Times review scathing with respect to Pornhub or with respect to the documentary? It was scathing of Pornhub, and it oh, helped yeah. lead to the path that got credit card um, processors from right. processing for Pornhub. But in the statement, it was scathing for Google, and it acknowledged. Is, so, But this is a super difficult, I mean, like, sure, this is, this is what somebody out there obviously thought what Ukraine was like, black and white issue. And probably a majority of people, I mean, look, you don't have to serve all the people either, but let's say most people probably do agree that if they knew what you have described about the pornography industry, it's a black and white issue. But now we've admitted to value judgments have entered the chat, right? And now what's going to be the next one? Mm. I'm sure, have you, you know, is that, is this going to be the only, the only one because it's, it's, it's such an important component of internet searching? I, for us, where we really landed, and you'll see this, I'd like to get back into the neutral. It really makes us different from, from DuckDuckGo and competitors because we lean on this there, but we lean on this here as well. We're not telling people not to watch pornography. We're not, that's not a moral judgment. Like, and I talk to, I talk about this topic more than I ever planned to <laughs> with, with people of all genders. And I'm always very clear, like I am not judging you. And there is a, there's addictive natures here. It's changing your prefrontal cortex when you repeatedly watch pornography. There's a lot that's out of your control. It's really just a decision that says, 
This is the third most common form of sex trafficking. We're putting it in a general search engine that we're handing to our children. We're using it at work. And this norm that was created by Google literally does not make sense. Put it into a Netflix type platform where you we put adult entertainment with adult entertainment where adults can watch it. But we have children who happen across this. Like a child will search for a body part because children do, and it's totally innocent. They come across pornography. Their parents later, this is a firsthand account that I heard. Their parent later finds that the kid has gone back to that same site so many times because it's doing something to that little brain that wasn't prepared to see that behavior, right? So this is a very scientific based understanding of how to treat content online that you hand to your children. The fact that it's the third most common form of pornography helps us say there's really no place for it in an information engine. And there's another value judgment that you guys make. Again, one that is wholesome as heck, but interesting. But I'd like to understand better Mm -hmm. what it means. We give American-made brands their sh fair share of shoppers. Other search engines put lower quality overseas products at the top of your shopping results. On Freespoke, you'll finally see American-made and veteran-owned businesses. So it's under it's important to understand what you are describing as the other behavior. What's going on there? So the other behavior we would point to is you search t-shirts or fans or, you know, I'm just thinking products that you would search in Google or Amazon, and you are flooded with a lot of cheap products, which is oftentimes people are looking for affordable um, at the top of your search results. And it's very difficult to find local, smaller businesses that are supporting local supply chains. And we said, people are asking for this. This is something you know, our most popular social media mantra has been, we show you what Google won't. And when we ask what people are looking for that Google won't show them, they'll tell us local, small American-made brands. It's really hard to find. And so we said, we can make sure and show those to you. But what's going on on the other end? Is it, obviously it's an algorithm choice, but is it is that algorithm choice driven by advertising revenues or with or with partnerships with shopping sites or by the evil Chinese communists? What 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 my understanding is those platforms are trying to make money. And so they put cheap, easy to access, easy, you know, fast, you can get it quickly products at the top that people grab. And American made products are a little bit more expensive. The supply chain forces that. Um, also we respect the climate and we respect people's, you know, wage and work day and those other nations don't as a result american-made products are more expensive and they don't sell off the off the shelves as quickly i think that's probably the reason the algorithm weighs more heavily on the cheaper foreign made is because you make more money off of them so this is so again i, I guess it's an, an important thing to understand is you're not necessarily saying we should be the only search engine you're saying we believe there's a, a market for people who want a search engine that shares certain values. Number one is neutrality of information. Number two is family friendly. And number three is because so much of the sh so much commerce, it, so much shopping is is done on the internet and starts out in a search engine that people can be presented with stuff with uh, with uh, purchasing opportunities that a e that even a truly neutral because I, I suppose the entire approach to designing sh shopping ha how to respond to a shopping oriented query is in and of itself an entirely different architecture from how you would Mm -hmm. Just answer a question about the world. It's an, an intent element that we understand your your the intent of your query is to find a product. And so we will, but I but we are for everyone. We I'd like to get into that point as well. In our product, you'll see American made products first, but then you see all the other products below. So so you aren't, you know, cut off from the rest of the offering. You just you get an enhanced offering. As I see it, as we kind of look at this, this question of who are we for. I think at least, at least four out of five Americans today are looking for a product like this. 
there may be one out of five Americans that's saying, I'm really happy with the status quo. I fully believe in it. I like my echo chamber. I don't care that I didn't know Donald Trump was going to get elected in 2016. And I was shocked, you know, like there are people that just kind of live in their little space and they, they're not looking to change that. And I think that's fine. Like let competition reign. But from what we see and from, from research we've done, four out of five Americans are saying, I want to see the full picture when I'm searching for something. I want to be able to access, I want to support my local supply chain. I want to make sure the next time there's a pandemic that I can get some basic goods and prices don't skyrocket, skyrocket. right? Like there's, there's a large swath of the domestic society that's looking for that. And then the international market is also very, very large looking for all these same offerings. Who is free spoke? I don't, I mean, like you, you mentioned, you know, up, Google's trying to make money with their search engine and they seem to do very well with that. Are you guys not trying to make money? Or you, you, this is a private for-profit enterprise, right? You're for-profit. We absolutely, I'm spending all day, every day, look, looking to turn that revenue. So, so that, so is it, is, is free spoke a company that has other businesses and this is one of them or it's it's the search engine business this is a search engine business and i my the revenue strategy that we see is that we can bring so many people along with us we already have right where we so let me give a little bit of that background started yeah, in 2019 please. poked our heads out in 2022 did a little bit of pr and and built a bit of a following there and then last year we really kind of put our heads back down and built strength a stronger search engine and this 20 March 2024 has really been our 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 launch year, right? It's time to get out there. It's time to make sure people know this product is here. It's fully operational, and you can use it. We're at about 1.6 million visitors a month visiting. On average, we hit about six million visits every month. So there's initial offering. There's initial group of people saying this is a solution. If if you see on people talking about it on Twitter, people are talking about it on TikTok. We can talk about that bill as well. Um, they're saying, hey, I'm searching for this topic and I'm not seeing it in Google. I use Freespoke. Like when I search on this topic, I use Freespoke. People are using it as a search engine where they feel better informed. What are examples of where people are coming up literally empty on Google? It's a lot of like certain sources that they're looking for. For example, your Russia Today art uh, example, we label Russia Today pro-Russia. So it's clear to somebody who doesn't know that it is Russian propaganda, but you're allowed to see it and see what Russia is propagating. So you're better informed. A lot of the like alternative medicine type audience is, is interested in a search engine that shows all viewpoints and doesn't exert an opinion up front before you can kind of get to the sources you're looking for. Um, we label independent sources as well. The labeling is really important because it allows us to put it into the algorithm and make sure when we're surfacing content based on recency and relevancy, that we're also surfacing an array of viewpoints. Yeah, I'm just looking at your news. Okay, so I, I clicked on 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 your. On, I'll I'll let the viewers follow my path here. So I. I here we go. I started out here and I went to news. So, okay, let's just go to story number one. And there's the pitch for the download and that's fine. So now here are different squibs from different articles and you are making the call. Someone, someone at free spoke is deciding that this is a middle of the road source left wing right wing so and is it a coincidence that the order is like this first i get a, a middle and then one each from right and left in this format it will always show middle left right correct and let me jump in because we did not want to be the true sayers of what was labeled left middle and right so we have used the methodologies of all sides media ad fontes media and media bias fact check. Those are three separate distinct organizations that label media bias on a chart. And so we use those charts to get, you know, an agreed upon label generalized for those labels. And do you, so that, that, that's going to be your soft spot 
on second guessing, I suppose, when someone says, how can you, I mean, look, we know that there are people who will say anything, but nobody likes to be labeled, which I'm sympathetic to, right? But it's a service to people who I always use my mom in Missouri, right? Like she's not living in Washington, DC or New York and able to decipher at all times what these different sources are. So you showed a news headline, you click to a story page, you can scroll through the news feed and you'll see a headline with all the different content left, right, and middle. Or if you search a news-related topic, you're going to see a search result that has the content labeled that's news-related. And so it helps that that very normal average, the majority of consumers really have a better understanding out of the gate. I'm just going to take, I took another story. This is the uh, Benny Willis, Georgia judge allows Trump to appeal Benny Willis disqualification ruling. So as presented, I'm going to made it a little. Okay. So the Hill middle MSNBC left Fox news, right? That's two hits in a row where left becomes before right. I think we can handle that. <laughs> uh, ABC News left, The Hill Middle, Washington Examiner right, Daily Beast left. That's fair. Yahoo News Middle, Daily Mail right. I'm not holding you responsible for any of these. Yeah, I'm just, ex I'm, just I'm experiencing it together with people. I support uh, that. Yeah. Uh, so if you. If you click back on the, the torch on the upper left and just scroll down, just scroll, scroll down. So here's where you can see a title, left, middle, right, right, middle, left. We make sure in this section, there's always one of each, but it's not in any distinct order. So that oh, is it. How did you know? How did you know that this one was going to be <laughs> it's right, middle, left? Hot news. That the right was going to be first on this one. Yeah, I know. It, it came to my saving <laughs> grace. Um, but you'll see as you scroll down, because what, what we learned is, particularly on mobile, you'll only see that first card oftentimes. You have to scroll. And we didn't want people to think you're just getting right or just getting left. So we mix those up. We make sure there's always one of each. These are stories that the censored story section for people listening and not watching us. The censored story section is a section that highlights content that isn't getting that full left, right, middle coverage. So wow. these are stories related to free speech, suppressed, somebody being suppressed or banned or a big tech overreach, but that isn't getting that full coverage. And so those stories go here. Wait, but this story says banned. Alabama lawmakers passed legislation that bans state funding of DEI. I so think reading yeah. that, I would think that the story was banned. That somebody got banned or the story was banned. So, this okay. So, so a, a machine is making these decisions and it kind of gets wrong there, I guess, huh? Well, this no, is this, is, this is, this is purposeful and it, the feedback is helpful, but this, it's a moment. What, what's going to be interesting as you look back over the years is this is a moment in time where this is something that's getting banned, right? Somebody banned state funding for something. That's interesting. You can agree or disagree with that, Right. Or um, I think you want to. I think I think there are ways for you to do this by maybe sharpening the nomenclature a little bit. Because again, yes, I see here, for example, in the Northwestern one, free speech. That like banned is a topic, as opposed to suppressed. Um, you might, but maybe you want to use for a label suppressed story. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm really, I'm really enamored by this. Yeah, I see the how you consistently use band. This is really cool. You have, I mean, the, everyone's gonna I guess that there's gonna always be second guessing, and and you're still by by and large looking at main things of mainstream ish interest. Not, you know, some of the obviously there's always gonna be freaky stuff that people are gonna complain about, and why can't I? get the protocol of the elders of zion you know uh, uh, th fine fine but this just the whole idea that you're even taking this approach is really refreshing and um so a point that i've made many times about the elon musk acquisition of, of twitter which became x of course is that by it's not perfect, 
there are things that don't add up. There's still shadow, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Insert fetch here. But by opening things up in the way that he has on Twitter, he has put free speech pressure on every single platform. Yeah. Do you think this will have the same result in, on other search engines? It was something we said from the beginning, and I, you know, I'm very committed to monetizing and growing free spoke, but there is a benefit of getting the other big tech companies that have such reach into your life to understand that they need to change course. If they start, you know, realizing that every person should be free and their business model should not protect child molesters, like that's one thing. If they also, to your point, feel the pressure that wow, we're losing people because they want all the viewpoints. They want us to stop telling them that this is the answer and they have to use these sources and suppress the others. They really want to be able to see everything for themselves. I, you know, I, I think it could be pressure. Really though, what we're seeing is there's a philosophical divide. I really like how Eisenhower says it, where he said he gave a commencement speech and he said, don't think that you're going to censor and I, or you're going to censor an idea by censoring the fact that it ever existed. And he started by saying, don't join the book burners. And I, what we all know from a history is that when you ban something, you push it into the black market where it thrives. And so there's a bit of that, you know, I, I think Google's trying to come from a good spot where they're saying, no, humanity, you need to follow this path to be happy and healthy. And we're just going to force you along the path. You know, I think it probably comes you know, from yeah, a, a good and, and, and Mao felt the same way. Right, a little dystopian in how it plays out. I, I'm going to make another observation, and you know, culminators, you're watching Ron Coleman discover this lie because again, mm -hmm. Ron doesn't prepare. That's part of the beauty, okay? And and when you get because when you're a polymath, you're you're be, you're special, okay? So as I'm scrolling down through here, and this, again. What I'm really, what just struck me is, I'm, I know I'm scrolling too fast for people to really trust me, but I'm not seeing a heck of a lot of celebrity garbage. Okay, there's People magazine. Kate Middleton has almost kind of crept into being a news story, though. I, I'm, I'm not seeing lots of Hollywood. It amazes me when you go to a, to a conventional website of any news organization, of course, they're all in the entertainment business. Mm -hmm. And the click so, bits. Okay. Yeah, well, all right. So you're exact. Oh, yes. Okay. So you're you're not clicking to any of your own news. You're not pushing any. You don't have your own news sources here. You're not even, not even Yahoo. You, well, Yahoo's not really a search engine anymore anyway. But your point, on occasion, I, I am from my... Born in Omaha, Nebraska, raised in Missouri. So I am a Chiefs fan. And there was, you know, we got some negative. Some people didn't like the coverage of Taylor Swift. You know, that's a little bit more of the pop. So there will be an iteration where. But you... again, the, the Taylor Swift stuff has become a political story. It, it, you, yeah. you, you know, but it's not someone, she's not someone who's ever meant anything in my life either. But People it's seem to notice there's something going on there. Right? She raises economies everywhere she goes. Like, you know, there's you, everybody has their opinion, but there's there's interesting information to know there. But we, to your point, that's those are the top 40 trending stories at any given time, constantly updated. But you can search through that, scroll through that, and know that you're just informed on the hot topics that are being discussed. An iteration that will be coming down the pipeline is the ability to click between political news or technology news or finance news, and we'll be adding more to that. Right now, it's just a simple one-stop shop for the top stories. And I hope that you'll you'll have a landing page, you know, option so that you know instead of just the search, which some people do use as as a, as a landing page, where you can get that. I guess you could just set the news if you if that's what you want as news, but whatever, you know, customizable landing pages. I mean, you can get them in a million different sources, but I'm really I'm really loving this. What what are the challenges then? I mean, you've got the obviously you've got the phenomenal network effects of the existing search engines, which isn't just Google or Bing, but it also includes uh, Twitter and Amazon, basically anything, any e-commerce site or any social media site, Facebook is a gigantic search engine. Hmm. You can't displace the functionality that platforms offer, but what's 
what's the focus? Where 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 do we attack besides getting onto, you know, little podcasts like this? Yeah, it's you know, we've our early go to market strategy. We Twitter has been a good outlet for us. Facebook, there's a big audience there that's frustrated. Um, we are the search engine that lets you see the full picture and think for yourself. And that's what people are looking for. So there is something very appealingly American about that. I, I, you know, I mean, and when, I, when I'm having one of my, I mean, this is kind of a culture war topic, but when I have some of my more ideological culture war guests and we talk about, um, the, you know, the question of why is religion having such a hard time? And I, I always observe, well, you know, it, it's hard to tell Americans to listen at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, if, 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 if your pitch is, uh, you, you are an American and I trust you, you're, you're also departing from what our government just in front of the Supreme Court was just saying on Monday. I listen. You know, listen, yeah. we, we don't want to hamstring the government from being able to to make sure that wrong information, misinformation isn't promulgated without our permission. What was your read of that? I listened to I I listened to it on recording after I didn't catch it live, but I fear I you know, from my position, I was hopeful we could kind of the fifth assume. circuit is going to affirm. It's not going to be unanimous. I think the three justices from The View will dissent from that opinion. They are absolutely in the tank for government control of information and of the concept that government speech is some kind of important value that is more than merely incidental to the act of governing. And I believe, I expect that there will be some sharp words about that topic from Justice Alito and Justice Thomas. I do think, however, the the fact that Justice, K- Justice Kagan and to some extent, Justice Sotomayor were really trying desperately to grasp onto a standing issue. Tells me there's no standing issue. <laughs> I was listening to that and I thought, I don't feel like there's a strong rebuttal to their questions, right? Like they. Well, no, no, no. I think there is a strong rebuttal. There is, there, there is, there is standing. Was it made though? Do you feel like it was executed in that in the arguments? Uh, well, it was our, no, no, it was. I, I think, I think, I think it was, pre- it was pretty clear. I mean, you have, you have one of the plaintiffs was, was literally, literally censored, and her organization was literally taken down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so th- 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 that's that's real enough. And and remember, it's a motion to dismiss. They don't have to prove their case. Mm-hmm. They just have to say this is what it looks like it happened. Got it. What you might very well have been troubled by, though, was that the argument really, even a lot of the conservative justices, got into weeds where they should not have been in the first place. I almost had to pull over to the side of the road I was driving (laughs) when Justice Roberts, I do think it was, said, well, you know, the government's not a monolith. That's like you're, you're just flinging stuff now we're talking about can the government do this right what was the motive of the government like we got i do feel like the arguments a little got off track from that a little bit and didn't and and there was much too much time spent and and this you know again the conservative justices could have been more well let me get there was much too much time spent on this question of how different is this from calling up a journalist and saying that story you ran is full of that and was, or if all the kids are jumping off cliffs and dying and the it's spreading on the search engine, and you need the president to call you to tell you to stop spreading it, then that's fine. And it was like, wait, what are we talking about here? Yeah, right. I mean, I, and I think the lawyer for, for, for Missouri did a good job of saying we're talking about censoring third parties systematically, mm-hmm. not there is an error in this. Because even at one point, someone said, well, what if it's what if it's an op ed? 
that, like that's something that I would expect from somebody packing the groceries. You, I mean, that's such a stupid retort. Yeah. It didn't. Yeah, it didn't feel like the intellectual debate that I was expecting. But, I was so, expecting. so here's here's the saving grace. It is very often the case that what you heard has very little to do about what will be decided. Mm, okay. They didn't take this case to reverse it. No, I don't think so. Because the Supreme Court isn't really that troubled by circuit splits. And plenty of other circuit courts, especially the Ninth, uh, have been really, really cool with corporate censorship. No matter how much government involvement there is, they took this court, they took this case because they want to say something. Will they say what we would really like them to say uh, to the full extent? I doubt that. Will it, what's it? Another interesting point is that Justice Thomas had suggested a few years ago in a concurrence that it hasn't the time come for us to look at these as public forums. Uh, and that was even Alito shooed that away. He didn't want he wanted no part of it. And I think, well, first of all, probably wasn't briefed that way. Um, and that seems to be a red line that nobody wants to cross. But at the end of the day, well, first of all, the the lack of familiarity with the facts on the part of many of the justices was distressing. And that's what kind of got me thinking about this when you talked about this in the context of a truly American feel to free spoke. And it's really that our founding fathers were inspired by these philosophers that debated and debated and debated ideas, right? Like Hobbes and Locke and Rousseau and Nietzsche, like they debated and they they didn't ever misunderstand the other point of view, right? They understood it so deeply they could could spit it out well. There is an op-ed that references previously. And that's how our founding fathers came about. And they did the same thing, right? And then when Justice Scalia passed away, NPR interviewed Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Justice Ginsburg, and she said, we were best buds. And the times when I would read his briefs before I had written my opinion, every once in a while I have to go back and rewrite my opinion, not because I was going to agree with him, right? Like they're diametrically opposed in there. But he nailed, he nailed me on this point and I can't he say nailed it. That. And now I have to work harder and my arguments even stronger as a result. And you know who benefits from that? The American people who are subject. Right to the laws and the regulations and the standings that come out of these cases. And it's very, very problematic that there was so much apparent tolerance for the idea that the government is going to decide not only, forget about opinions, but that, that so-called misinformation which I'm going to share with you something that many of my other podcast guests have heard before. Misinformation is not a real thing. It is a newly coined word taken from the word disinformation, mm -hmm. which is an affirmative prop propaganda technique. You can be misinformed about something. Okay. So they have back mutated this word of misinformation so that you're not accusing someone of necessarily being a commie dupe, but you are suggesting that they are purposely promulgating False stuff fact. they're misinformed about. Got it. The government, and I just wish at some point during that oral argument, someone had said, but the government is wrong about a lot of things, including a, a lot of the things that were th that were the subject of this COVID nineteen uh, um, censorship. Right. Maybe it will come up in the course of the opinion. I do think this is going to be a, um, an affirmance. They might very well toy with the breadth of the injunction. Um, there is some vague language in there. They might remand to the Fifth Circuit to be more precise in its uh, in its restrictions. They may decide not to uh, not to include. Well, listen, it's a lot, there are a lot of possibilities, but it's it's very interesting. It, it was a great exercise. 
And you're right, you know, in my profession, the way we prepare for argument is by reading our other side's, the other side's briefs. Deeply and, knowing what the attacks on the other side or the beliefs on the other side are going to be. Right. And, and you know, if it's an important uh, argument, you do a moot court and you ha and, and there has been an absolute, a major, major decline in the entire educational concept of understanding. We went from tolerance. Let's understand what it's like to be X or Y or Z, though. That's cool. That that serves the value you and I are discussing to we will not listen to intolerant views right. to we will not listen to any view but the view we asked you at once to be tolerant of now it's the dominant and the only view we're going the the search engine that 90 percent of americans use aren't going to show you the point of view that we disagree with is vulnerable is, so is google vulnerable business-wise in terms of the search engine they're getting where where people are very uh, verbose in their frustration is the quality of results. So not only that that you have to scroll past, past all the ads, but there's entire Reddit communities that are saying the results are not as good. Why can I not find what I'm looking for? Internal at Google, they're saying it's kind of gotten out of control and we don't know how to fix like a lot of these things, right? They have buildings well, full of engineers that tackle it, but that's not their main business, right? As an advertising business that is served through gleaning all the information about you through your searching, but it is, it's degrading in quality. As is the case with, with any kind of brand or product equity, if you draw down on the capital of that equity, you eventually find you have no equity. You're not into that because you've stopped building equity. You're drawing on it. And if Google comes across as merely a left-wing shopping service for ch cheap Chinese junk or a porn engine, then people will go to oh, okay. Facebook. <laughs> and the great thing about the competitors that came before us is people have learned, oh, it's not so hard to change your search engine. You can go to freespoke.com. You can make us your default search engine on your desktop. You can make it in your phone and through the app and you switched. What are the barriers to entry besides the network effects and, and the first coming, the first comer advantages? I mean, there must be a reason that there aren't 10 of these or are there 10 of these? And you're just the one. There, who... are, there are 10 of them. There's only uh -huh. three, you know, brave Dutch go on us um, are really at the top okay. of the competitors, but there are 10 behind us um, fighting for that next realm. There is the, it's getting the word out, right? So it takes a lot of marketing. Are you dependent at all though on the Google API or the Bing API and, or anyone else's API? We, we do have some other, we are not relying upon big tech at all. So we partner with some other non-big tech APIs to feed that deeper search result. So if you're searching for shoes, right? Like, well, we have American made on top of there, but if you're searching for paper, um, that's fed by a partner API. We really specialize in the news element on top, the label, that's our own algorithm feeding that um, and the products right now. And we continue to build and enhance what we offer and minimize what we partner with. And the revenue the the revenue plan again is is it's what pretty, again so yeah so let me um it's really the i want to hit neutral we talked about it's a search engine that supports the debate of ideas shows you all those viewpoints and it's porn free which we've talked about but it is private as well we offer that same privacy promise as other, other competitors you can search anonymously and right now you can sign up for premium so if you sign up for premium it's 30 dollars a year it's five dollars it's three dollars a month right now but it's going up in the next couple of weeks so get in, it'll be $5 a month and you get an ad-free experience in Freespoke. And what we're launching with that increased price in two weeks is a full ad block across the entire worldwide web as you enter it through Freespoke. So as you search, as you try to read and gather information, you won't get inundated with ads as you're pondering. This is the yeah. thing. If this audience is saying Google is is misbehaving in all these ways, I would love your thoughts on TikTok real quick too. But as we think about my thoughts on TikTok, if we label TikTok as as the need to divest or sell because a national security threat, because they have your data and they can influence you through an algorithm, what are we doing with Google who has way more information about you and has influenced you in way larger ways through their algorithm? And if they know every single thing about you and they knit together profiles about you from everything they gather and they make money off that and they're only generating 
it's a, it's studied about 60 to hundred dollars a year. It's like a one measure, like $66 a year is made off of you from all of that data through Google. They just make all that money because they have so many people. Would you not pay $30 a year to a competitor to take that down, to take them out, to support David taking out the Goliath? This is a sales pitch, people. folks. This is a sales pitch, but it's a good one. <laughs> but it's a good one. It's sincere. It's a question. I, but, 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 but it's a very good, I mean, I have been astonished at the at the protexia that Google has on Capitol Hill, yeah. I, I that, that there is really no, it's not going to be until the disaster happens, if it's not too late, right. that any action will be taken. That they have so much private information that's so, okay. Uh, but Ron, uh, 20 minutes ago, you were screaming into the camera, the government's wrong. The government's wrong, okay, but I'm not an anarchist, and I'm not even a libertarian. I'm saying the government should not be deciding what information, like, is there such a thing as regulation? Yes, yeah. there is. If you want to have no regulation at all, then let there be no regulation at all. But if there's going to be regulation, you've got to look to the sectors and the industries and the businesses that have the greatest effect on X. You want to say X is the economy. You want to say X is national security, whatever it is. It's insane that Google gets such, and, and, and Facebook, of course, which is, I don't know if Facebook is even going to be around in five years, to tell you the truth. Oh, then, and what I've just, listened, I, I just saw a great video of, on Google about how, just how bad their product development is and, 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 and how people are calling for uh, their CEO to step down, that he hasn't really hardly delivered on anything. So, I think you know. something, we see it that you get so big and it's hard to turn the boat back toward your user base that wants you to respond to their need and you can't and you sink. So I'm curious also that I'll be watching the end of May is when the Google antitrust court case is the final arguments are going to be made. That will be, yeah, I mean, look, so there's so much going on and Google is so, look, if there's such a thing as an antitrust law, the idea that you can have companies like Google that are bigger than many, many nation states, both in terms of revenue and uh, influence and probably even military power, um, and that there's essentially no antitrust you know, uh, enforcement against them, then, then why do we have those laws? What are they, what are they for? Uh, you know. Alcoa was broken up or in the 1950s. We're done. We did that. Repeal it then. If that's going to be the policy, then let's repeal it. You wanted to talk a little bit about TikTok. Believe it or not, we're coming up on an hour. I don't know. Hmm. If there's really, I mean, I saw, I read an explainer that said that the data that TikTok collects isn't all that much different from the data that Verizon collects and that most other stuff on your app on your on on your phone collects so make more money and target you more effectively so you get the video you want so you spend more time so you, they make more money see the problem is that not with, I, I think this um chinese ownership stuff is i think we're both saying the same thing is is a straw man what the objection on the part of many people is is it's melting our culture it's ruining people's brains it's okay so you have a content based suggestion yeah that's not what congress is for yeah okay now i mean no listen congress point, does yeah. have an interest it just congress doesn't do anything good for us anymore at all but as originally you referred to some founding fathers okay what they had in mind was that congress would do good stuff for the country and if you're going to do good stuff for the country then yes protecting the country in some way from you know insanity and look, there's a lot you can, you can justify in terms of young people, but young people, I mean, you, there's an entire generation of people a little bit younger than you who are essentially adolescents well into their 20s. So if you tell, these are cultural problems for our country. In my family, the kids didn't don't, don't get smartphones until they're married. And I've got one who still doesn't have one. Oh, that's okay? great. That's how you, you know, that, that that's how you roll if you want to live true real life i think my one hope is if the bill does pass that it does create a precedent that says this is national security threat level that access to data and that access to controlling people through an algorithm 
like falls into a national security asset or a national security. Right. But the, so the, the problem with the bill, the problem, another problem with the bill, as, as I understand it, is it gives a tremendous amount of discretion to an essentially unreviewable officer to make these natural national security determinations. And look what happened with Trump Russia. That was a complete made up story. Yeah. I was about to say Bubba Misa from from my <laughs> Yiddish viewers, a complete fairy tale, and and every and every one of the you know of the intelligence community officials signed on to it. Yeah. Why do I want to let them? Just can't trust the government at that level. Yeah. I will say this much: Why don't we work our way back? As before starting off with the public and the kids. What if we start having security in the military? Yeah. What if we stop employing actual members of the Revolutionary Guard as diplomats? I, I mean, I mean, some of the people who I thought that too. Like, if you're trying to keep China from spying on us, like there are many places you can go. Like the Navy. <laughs> I, I mean, you know. So yeah. it's just it's all too much. I can't believe it. We're all. We're all yeah. used up. Kristen, what a give, great conversation. I just want to give one data point to something you said, that if you if you listed the 10 most largest economies of the world, Google would be in that. They're about the size of South Korea or Brazil. So just to paint that picture of like who has all this power. But Yeah, it's, it's it, everything is just, is a mess. But listen, if there's, indeed, if search engines are going to maintain the place that they, I think, certainly will in our culture, not just in what do I find on the internet. What we find on the internet is everything. It's everything. Everything. Then what you're doing is super duper important and you should make lots of money from it. And I, I'll i sign up for premium. Why not? I, I you know, mm -hmm. I, there's one born every minute and I'm usually one of them. Uh, but but it, but I really like what I, I really like what I saw. And gang, you saw me liking it in real time. This is not an infomercial. There were no no promotional um, consideration. I mean, when we get off, she can she can you know hire me as, as an influencer. But Kristen, thank you so. Thank you, so great, much. great conversation. Thank you.